Hi there, Colin Klupik here. In the previous video, we talked about this joint here, which is the rebated butt joint. And that's where you take a piece out of this timber here, a cutout or a shoulder as it's sometimes called, and then you slide another piece of timber in here and join it together with glue. And you end up with a fairly simple, but very commonly used joining method. And it looks quite good when it's done well. It's very simple. What if you wanted to take it one level further and make it even simpler than that? Could you just take one piece of timber and shove it up against another one or butt it up against another piece of timber and then glue it together? Well, yes, you could. And then to make it stronger, you would reinforce that with a couple of screws and you'd end up with the glued and screwed butt joint. Now, it sounds simple and it is simple, but there are a couple of little tricks that go with it. For example, Getting the alignment right on this joint can be tricky because one screw will generally go in quite well and it'll be nice and flush here. But then the other one, depending on how you've clamped the job, can get a little bit slippy because there's glue in here and then when the screw goes into the grain, sometimes the grain makes the screw wander off a little bit and then you end up with this little ridge here, which I can just catch my fingernail on. And then you end up with a joint that isn't quite right and the timber or the joint, the corner, I should say, tends to rock a little bit and the alignment isn't quite right. And then the student will say, oh, it's okay, I can just sand it down. And then you're back to that whole, oh, you can just sand it down thing. Well, this video isn't so much about the technicalities of putting the joint together, although we will look at that. It's more about what do you say to students about joint selection and what to do about some of these problems that can occur. Well, the first thing to say about this is that it allows you to cater for a wider set of abilities because you can get better overall general success by using a joint like this because of its simplicity. But then again, it's not a particularly attractive timber joint to use. It's more utilitarian. I just need to quickly make a corner. I'll just butt them up, glue and screw and you're done. However, having said that, it can also be very useful for exactly the same purpose because sometimes you don't always want to do something that is really beautiful. You just need to get the job done. And that often happens in a classroom. You might have a student who has the potential to do something really amazing with a particular job they're working on, or you might be working with a student who just needs to get the job done, or there might be a little bit of both. So how do you practice this? What do you do with it? How do you go about it? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. For example, if they are getting some misalignment in their joints, or if you are just introducing the students to the joint for the first time, you can get them to do it several times with several small pieces of timber, and then they can have a look at their improvement on each corner. So this was the second one I did, and this corner here is okay, and the misalignment here is better than this one. And then I flipped it over and did it again, and this one here is just about perfect, actually. It's really nice and, really nice and smooth. Uh, and you end up with a small demo that you can actually show to the class and say, look, here's one I prepared earlier, uh, and then guide them through the process. And then they can come and measure their progress against something that you've done. So two things. The joint is actually quite useful from a utilitarian perspective. It's not particularly beautiful, but it does work and gets the job done. And it's the kind of thing that you see on simpler projects like uh, the corner of a toolbox, for example. And the second thing is it provides you with the opportunity to uh, create a small practice project to do in the classroom that can keep students uh, engaged and involved for a good length of time on something that gives them a really good outcome and a really good experience of how to get things right with uh, a fairly low risk of failure. So they, they get something that actually works, they can see it, that it's working, and um, you can actually give them some really good feedback on their progress. Once again, it's one of those things where you could number the joins as you go around and say, oh look, number two was better than three, number four wasn't so good as number two, and so on. So let's have a quick look at the process of making this, and then I'll come back and say a couple more things. You can be fairly arbitrary with where you place the screws. For a piece of timber 90 millimeters wide like these two, I'll use two screws. For this exercise, I could use 38 or 40 millimeter screws to get the right amount of depth, because the timber is 19 millimeters thick. I just happen to have 10 gauge screws for this example. I could also get away with 8 gauge. Using this common process, I'll mark out where the pieces connect by marking off the actual timber, using a tri-square to square it up. Once in place, I'll use a pencil to mark off the timber, allowing me to see exactly where the pieces will come together. Now, once again, I can be a bit arbitrary about where I place the screws. 
I'm going to come in 15 millimeters from each end and then ensure that each screw is located down the center line of where the two timbers meet. It's not mission critical to get this absolutely perfect. It's one of those joining methods that can be done very quickly if need be, or if you're not too fussy about how it all looks in the end. One of the few things that I'd actually use a nail for is to mark the centers for drilling, in the absence of a nail punch, of course. I prefer to minimize the use of nails in a school workshop, which is a topic for another video. Next, drill two clearance holes for the screws to pass through. A four millimeter drill bit will do nicely. So that I don't drill into the bench top unnecessarily, I'll use a piece of old melamine as a sacrificial drilling board. And you end up with two nice clean holes. Swap out the drill bit now for a countersinking bit and then countersink each hole to take a 10 gauge screw. This can take a bit of trial and error and you can use the head of the screw to measure how much more you need to drill before the head of the screw fits neatly into the countersink. So here we are, time to join these two together. And as you can see, handling these small pieces can be a bit of a juggle. As with all joints, it's best to use holding devices like a clamp or a vise. Even then, when the pieces are small, it can be tricky. You can also raise the timber up out of the vise a bit and use a supporting piece to give you better vision of what's going on and more stick out to work with. Apply some glue evenly over the surface and then place the two pieces together. This is where students will struggle a bit with things getting a bit slippy. Now, in principle, this looks straightforward. Anyone can use a battery drill, right? Well, in practice, it can take a few goes of driving the screws in gently, one at a time, or bit by bit in alternate goes to get an accurate alignment. And you can see here how the screw can tend to go off course when it hits the end grain of the timber. That's kind of just what happens. Even when you've been really careful, you can still easily get some misalignment, as you can see in this example. Students will struggle with this, which is why practicing the joint a few times will help them develop accuracy. Another way to approach this is to clamp these small pieces. And you can see in this example as well that the timber isn't exactly flat and it gets pulled together by the clamp. This also contributes to alignment problems. But look, this is a small practice joint and these clamps are quite large and that's just kind of par for the course in this kind of exercise. You can also allow the glue to dry partially before driving in the screws to help avoid misalignment. Just don't leave it too long as driving home a screw in a glued joint may also crack the glue line and cause a weakness. And you can see here that the result is much better this time. The alignment is spot on. So the point to emphasize to students here is to ensure their workpiece is properly held by the appropriate clamp or vise. This makes it easier and much safer too. So here it is, the glued and screwed butt joint. Is this still worth teaching to students? Absolutely it is. Uh, that's because it's a very utilitarian joint. It's simple, but it gets the job done without looking overly beautiful and being overly complicated. It allows you to add a range of different techniques into your projects to cater for a wider range of abilities with students. And it also gives you the opportunity to practice it yourself and to create some nice little demos like this one that you can show your class and even slightly more complicated ones like this, which you can also get your students to do where they get to practice the joint continuously as they move around the corners with multiple pieces of timber. And like I mentioned earlier, it's not a very expensive practice exercise to do, and it will yield very good results with your students as they learn to develop their skills and their disciplines in getting it right. So I do commend it to you. And uh, as with all of these, I recommend that you experiment with them a lot yourself and hang on to these because they do make very good classroom demos. So when someone says, oh, excuse me, can you just show me how that works? You can say, here's one I prepared earlier. We'll see you in the next video.